One Bitcoin will be worth one million dollars in the future. And that's not me suggesting that. That's asset giant Fidelity suggesting that. They just put out a 19-page report talking all about Bitcoin and why it's valuable. Bro, what is this? Fidelity's model predicts Bitcoin to one million? That's usually something McAfee would say. Now institutions are predicting it? Bullish. So we're going to go over some of the highlights in this 19-page report. I mean, for instance, just to give you a taste, Bitcoin is the most significant innovation in finance since the Medici's invented double-entry accounting. And in this report, they talk about all sorts of things, and they really come down to the fact that, you know, Bitcoin right now is an aspirational store value. In the future, we could see everybody seeing it as a store value. And if that's the case, one Bitcoin will equal one million dollars. Now, if you don't know who Fidelity is, it might be hard to understand why this is significant. So do me a favor, like the video, and let me give you some perspective. Fidelity Investments is actually the largest financial services company in all of North America, and they have recognition across the globe. It is an American multinational financial services corporation based in Boston. As of 2018, they have 2.46 trillion assets under management. And even just taking a look at their site, you can see what kinds of services they offer to their clients. Private wealth management, wealth management, Fidelity Personalized Financial Planning and Advice, Fidelity on the Go. So their whole purpose in life to their millions and millions of clientele around the world is to give them investment advice. So when they come out and do a 19-page report that comes to the conclusion based on stock to flow, based on everything we talk about on this channel, if you subscribe, you already know why Bitcoin is fundamentally valuable. But when these guys come out and say Bitcoin can rise to $1 million and share quotes and information like this, you don't need to be a PhD to understand that the number of dollars just doubled, whereas the Bitcoin supply just halved. It comes to no surprise. Let's get to the top story of the day. Fidelity President files for new Bitcoin fund. This just came out hours ago. Fidelity President and Head of Strategy and Planning Peter Jubber today filed paperwork with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission informing the regulator, the SEC, of the new fund that they have that is dedicated to Bitcoin. It's called Wise Origin Bitcoin Index Fund. It was incorporated this year. It's being run from the same Boston headquarters where the investing giant manages 8.3 trillion in customer funds. So I guess in the past two years, their management or their assets under management has really increased to 8.3 trillion. The early documentation provides little in any details about the fund and shows zero investors have currently participated. We do know that the minimum investment to join the pooled investment fund is 100,000, indicating it is likely only for institutional and accredited investors. This is the latest development at Fidelity, showing the seriousness in which they're taking Bitcoin as an investable asset. We already know in 2017, they came out and admitted we've been mining Bitcoin since 2014. And then in 2019, the New York Department of Financial Services granted Fidelity a so-called bit license, allowing it to run a variety of crypto businesses. And now we're seeing those crypto businesses come to light. So, I mean, think about it, guys. Bitcoin is the future. Do you think Fidelity is in on the Ponzi? Not at all. They're right in the beginning of a financial revolution. I've, I encourage you to check out this full report yourself. I'll leave a link in the description. Um, it's basically a great 19-page report to send anybody who wants to know why Bitcoin is a good investment. Send them this video. Send them this report because Fidelity Digital Assets spells it out for their clientele. Moving on, let's talk about some big picture stuff. Then I want to get into some DeFi news. And I think I'm going to end it by talking about this little, uh, give my opinion on, on what happened in uh, Bitcoin crypto Twitter. So that'll, we'll save that for the end. Let's talk about big picture, what's happening in the overall cycle of the Bitcoin market. Well, we are now over 600 days into the current cycle and are closely tracking the performance of the previous cycle, which began in 2015. If this cycle evolves similarly, there will be at least several hundred days remaining. So basically our cycle is the purple, they're comparing it to the 2015, 16, 17 cycle, the green, and they're saying we're most closely tracking with that cycle. And if we continue to track with it, several hundred days of upside. 
remaining. And I do want to give you some thoughts from Willy Wu. Although things are looking very long-term bullish, we could be seeing a potential dip to buy coming up. Macro update. While the longer time frame on-chain structure is bullish, we are seeing a large number of coins being moved on-chain, which usually means a reversal of directions. We just peaked in coins moving. So the last move was obviously bullish. We've been going up. This suggests the next move, since we've seen a lot of coins move on chain, we could see people taking profits, price going down a little bit. In my opinion, that is a dip to buy. Before we move on to DeFi, last piece of Bitcoin news. Another Bitcoin Lightning startup is working with Visa to fast track card payments. So the other week, I invited you to download a Bitcoin app called Strike, where you can use it to spend your Bitcoin in everyday life super user friendly connects right to your bank account you can use the lightning network i thought this was pretty cool just wanted to let you know something a startup called last bit is in beta to pretty much do the same thing and you know, there's just competition among plenty of developers trying to work on the lightning network I've said this before my personal opinion i don't think bitcoin needs the lightning network to to be seen as a success this cycle i think when we're ready to use bitcoin uh, you know for everyday payments um it will be there Let's talk about DeFi, guys. DeFi continues to defy our expectations. DeFi just surpassed 7 billion. So it took 2.5 years to reach 1 billion locked in DeFi. Five months after that to reach 3 billion. Just one month after that, we'd reach 6 billion, now 7 billion. This is exponential growth. 100 billion locked in DeFi over the next few months. I mean, it's possible, right? Especially when you get such healthy growth like this. But now we're seeing over 7 billion locked in DeFi. Most of that is locked on Ethereum and projects on Ethereum. The only exception is the Lightning Network for Bitcoin. Also something of note, Aave has just taken majority dominance for um, you know, assets locked and Maker for most of the time. You know, most assets were locked in Maker up until this point. Now it's Aave and they're both you know, lending. In other news, let's talk about what's happening in India. Indian crypto P2P market size has tripled despite regulatory uncertainty. So in addition to the Indian P2P marketplace surging with Bitcoin for recent months, the country's DeFi sector has been gaining momentum as well. DeFi? India? Let's find out what that is. First of all, Bitcoin. Peer-to-peer -peer Bitcoin trading within the Asian powerhouse is still surging, hitting all-time highs over the first week of August. According to data aggregated by peer-to-peer -peer Bitcoin marketplaces, Paxful and local Bitcoins, weekly trading volumes in India has been gaining ground consistently since April. For example, during the first week of August, Bitcoin's local trade quota stood at 4.4 million, Obviously, a huge increase from the 1.2 million weekly trade volume that was witnessed during the first week of January 2020. You can see that growth right here. Now, as far as DeFi, you know, it, it did not surprise me that people are opting into, into Bitcoin in India because they could use a hard money. It surprised me that this article is suggesting that DeFi is also growing. So let's find out about that. DeFi gains momentum in India. Binance will host a first-of-its-kind decentralized finance-oriented hackathon followed by an accelerator program. A spokesperson for the company stated that the goal is to bridge the gap between the blockchain sector and mass adoption of crypto in India. As part of the hackathon, a special consideration will be given to various DeFi products that are related to many tokens, microfinancing applications, blockchain data sets, blockchain AI solutions, a company representative told Coindesk recently. So is DeFi growing? Well, Binance is growing and it's cool they're engaging the community and expanding to India. You know, that's the cool thing about Bitcoin. That's the cool thing about cryptocurrencies. Kids in Bangladesh can buy coins, unlike, you know, the, the dot-com bubble which the 2017 crypto bubble is still immensely smaller than the dot-com bubble. Yet the dot-com bubble was mainly just an American thing for U.S. accredited investors. And cryptocurrency is a global thing where kids can buy coins. So uh, things are going to get a whole lot bigger. I think you can see that. Finally, guys, let me give you my thoughts on this. Let's talk about the tribalism that goes on in the cryptocurrency space. So the story is Bitcoin maximalists accused of shilling an SEC cleared token. It's like BNB, only better, says a supposed Bitcoin maximalist. Now, if you don't know the story, an exchange called INX has launched its own 
uh, token to go along with the exchange. It's like BNB token. It's a utility exchange token, only it is a registered security. The only reason this is news at all is because a lot of the people behind it are people that, from what I can tell, a lot of these guys are only Bitcoin. The Bitcoin maximalists, you could call them, but also their rhetoric in general is very only Bitcoin. And that's not something I have a problem with necessarily. It's just, you know, this is news because it's so incongruent with their rhetoric. It's like, you know, if you're calling Ethereum a scam, that's fine if you have that opinion. But then when you build something on Ethereum, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. So, um, you know, the only reason this is news is because it kind of goes against the rhetoric they've been saying. Um, you know, it kind of makes me feel better that I have, you know, despite the fact that I agree with a lot of things that Bitcoin maximalists say, I want to always be able to talk about everything going on in the cryptocurrency space. I don't want to feel, you know, limited, like I only have to talk about Bitcoin because for some reason this tribalism is 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 like no other in this space. And it's it's I understand the perspective of, you know, Bitcoin is different from everything else. But then when you build something on Ethereum, if you're if we have other tweets from you saying Ethereum's a scam or, or whatever it is, you know, stuff like this, it just raises some flags. So I have no problem with it. It's an interesting story. Let me know what you think in the description below. That's it, guys. My name is Aaron at Altcoin Daily. See you tomorrow.